Hi, welcome back to the channel. Thanks for tuning in. So on the bench today, we have a historic engine, at least in my books anyway, it's a 532 uh, engine, and it has a A-type gearbox on it, which is the, uh, so these are, this is the version of engine before the 582 Model 90, and it's the version of gearbox before the official B gearbox. Uh, it has single ignition, point style uh, ignition on it. So uh, not a lot of redundancy in the ignition system, that's for sure. Uh, it uh, has 50 hours on it reportedly, and it's been sitting for years and years and years. So I'm gonna open it up and find out what, if any corrosion is inside of it and get it ready to go back into service again. So we'll see what this entails as far as corrosion goes. Maybe it has corrosion, maybe it doesn't. This is the whole point of these senior engines that have been sitting around, uh, like I call, like you would call it a hanger queen. So it has very little hours on it, but years and years and years. These ones can definitely be full of corrosion, or maybe not. It depends on what your risk tolerance is, I guess, whether you just want to start this up and try and fly it. For most people, I don't think they're interested in that. Uh, the wisest thing to do is, of course, what we're going to do with this engine, completely dismantle it, check everything, make sure it's right, and then we'll put it back into service. If you were ever curious as to what a Provision 4 engine is, this is it right here on the PTO end. It has four mounting holes instead of the usual eight that go all the way around on the modern engine. So there you go, Provision 4. So let's do a visual examination on here and of course we can see that this carburetor socket it's a little crusty at the top what happens if we flex the carburetor well it's okay going that way what happens when we flex it this way oh, look at that that is wide open you can go right inside there look at that well i would say these are the most rottenest carburetor sockets that I've ever seen to date anyway as you can see I've got the carburetors removed and what comes into the view right away there's some fluid down here it's not oil that's water with the flywheel it exposes the two sets of points there's a space in between the points in the crankshaft as you may be able to see why is that? Well, it doesn't have the cam or the lobe ground onto the crankshaft on these 532s that opens the points. So how do the points open? Well, it's actually onto the flywheel. So you can see in the hub of the flywheel here, the, the distance here and the distance across there. So this is where the cam is that actually opens the points. Kind of a neat idea, because if it gets worn out, you can buy a new hub for the flywheel instead of a new crankshaft. But anyway, it doesn't matter. They don't make it that way anymore, so it's a non-issue. I've made a witness mark right here. Where oh, does it show up? Right in here. Yes, it does. Anyway, that way, I'm assuming the timing, or I must assume the timing was close enough that it did run before, so I'd like to put it back to exactly where it came from that saves me a whole bunch of gross adjustments and I can just fine tune the timing on it after. And that's really tough to turn. So remember there was water in here. I have the spark plugs out, so this should turn quite easily and it surely doesn't. So that's not looking very promising at this point. Another uh, interesting point is on the base gasket thickness. This is really thick. Um, I've measured it um, in the part that isn't compressed that's outside here, and it's yeah, about 40, I'm gonna say 45 thou. Um, it may have swelled up a little bit, but it's certainly much, much thicker uh, here uh, gasket than uh, is in a 582. Uh, so I'm gonna have to make sure that if this is going to go back together 
that I have a gasket somehow of the, of the proper thickness because it'll change the port timing and it probably won't make as much power as it used to. So there's a lot in the base gasket. It has to be right. And here's the big reveal. What do we see? Well, it was running at one time. Actually, not that badly. And... Why is it so hard to turn, to rotate? I don't see any rust in there. It's not obvious. Or on that side either, so no. And this cylinder, just as a point of interest, we can see where all the little transfer ports are. Typically when these engines, uh, like a 582, when it's running good, there's some clean spots there. So that cylinder looks like it's been happy when it was running. This one, not so much. You can just see a little change in the texture right there. But uh, maybe the uh, points were closed up in one cylinder and not the other, so it didn't have the right timing. Before I take the cylinders off though, because it's got that thick base gasket, I'm gonna put my uh, degree wheel on the PTO end of the crank, and I'm going to check and see what the port timing is on this, and uh, which would be right there. I wanna see how many degrees that is because um, I think they put that thick gasket in this engine for a reason. Uh, it's a 532 and it's claimed to make 65 horsepower, 64 horsepower, whatever. So there's a reason that they're getting that kind of horsepower out of a smaller engine. Maybe we can find out why. I'm curious, I'm always curious. Well, I've repositioned the engine as you can see, it's standing uh, up straight so that when I remove the cylinders, if there was any cred below there, it doesn't fall in the engine. Well, okay. Ooh, there's a piston in there. Okay, let's see what we got on the other side. And look at that other piston again. That was all the bolts falling out that hold the cylinder on. The cylinder doesn't look that bad either. Well, that's interesting. So, I wonder why it's so stiff to turn, to rotate the engine. Okay, well, let's put the crankcase next and see what's in there. So the, as you can see, the crankshaft has been removed from the crankcase and it's down here. And of course we saw all the corrosion on it before, but what I really wanted to highlight was just look at the window in the connecting rod here. Look at the rust and the corrosion that's in there. It's, it's a lot of corrosion. There's a little something right there. I'm not sure what it is. Then we move into the lower half of the crankcase. Well, we have a dead fly in the mag end. Not unusual because there's, you know, places where little critters can get into the mag and that's not unusual. We see some water here. And we move down here. We see some water and some rusty water. Of course, the brown water. And then we have some type of a critter's wing right here, probably the other wing, and its fuselage here. This is, let's see, potentially another fuselage. Oh, I wonder. I'll bet you that that thing right there is the second fuselage's wing. So they must have come in through the carburetor, whatever kind of critters these were. Uh, I've found uh, mouse houses and dead mice in motors before. This is the first time I've found some flying things. Anyway, uh, water here, water here. So all in all, no big surprise. I knew it was going to be rusty, just didn't know how rusty it was going to be. Well, I would imagine about the last thing I need to look at on this engine is the carburetors. Well, here's the bowl off of one, which I think is the mag carburetor. I don't know what that goo in the bottom is. Um, it's definitely all clogged up in the main jet. But uh, check this out. Single hung floats. Wow. This is old school. This one. All the water that's in the bottom of the bowl. Uh, it looks like actually I can see water completely inside of the main jet. 
water on the float and again it's the single hung float really old school so there we have it 532 engine historic piece of equipment being that it needs a crankshaft and of course we'll need to spend a lot of money to rehab the carburetors i'm not sure where we're going to go with it i'll uh, still uh, have yet to measure pistons and cylinders visually or like by the internet way they look great <laughs> but i'm actually going to measure them <laughs> because remember i've said this before we learned a number on it you're just guessing so uh, anyway i'll uh, finish that up i'll do an estimate for the repairs on this and we'll find out where the customer wants to go with it i'm not sure what his restoration project actually is so uh, it'll all be up to him i just gathered the information and let him know Anyway, thanks so much for watching today. It was a pleasure to spend some time with you. If you haven't subscribed yet, maybe you want to consider doing so. Thanks so much. Bye now.